Well, I want to welcome students to this course once again, GST 111. As usual, we have six taking this course. Um, I am Stephen, Dr. Stephen David. I'm taking the aspect of comprehension and reading skills. I guess I'm the last person on board. Uh, among the six lecturers who are involved in the teaching of this GST 111. Now, let me start by asking this question Comprehension. What is comprehension? Now, in this context, comprehension as students in tertiary institutions simply refers to the ability of the individual student to totally understand a given passage or a given text after it's been, write, it's been read. It could be a writing, it could be a book, it can also be described as the mental relationship between two persons. Sometimes again we listen to others or we read authors, we read the books written by authors, we also look at uh, what newscasters and television say on radio to us at home. Whatever it is, once it involves this aspect of information being passed from one person to another, There is a need to totally understand what the person talking wants to deliver per time. And that is what comprehension is all about. Proper dissemination of information is very important. If not, it will amount to an exercise in futility. Now, from what I've said above, we recognize that every form of communication, whether it is electronic, such as television, broadcasting, or graphic, or reading what an author has written, or a speech where the individual listens to a teacher in class, all this involves coding and decoding. What is coding? Coding is the system of passing information, whereas the coding is the analysis and understanding of the information passed by the encoder. There is therefore a need and a necessity for the decoder to always find adequate means of decoding any information. And that's what we do as students. That's what we do. We try to decode what an author has to communicate by time. Now that takes us to the next thing, which is reading. Like I said earlier on, the topic is comprehension and reading skills. For you to comprehend a passage, you must read. So what is reading? Reading is one of the most important tasks taken in various academic contexts. As a student at this level of your educational attainment, you are expected to be able to read a text in order to comprehend its contents. Now, this is done either by silent or oral reading, which can be read aloud. It is also instructive to note that in over 75% of the time you are in school as a student in tertiary institution, you are reading silently in your field. You are not expected to read aloud. You need, therefore, to be properly trained in the art of silent reading, which is one of the things we encourage at this level of your educational pursuit.
Our reading is supposed to be efficient. And efficient reading depends, first of all, on having a purpose for reading. In other words, knowing why you are reading a text. Now, the purpose of reading could be a, venera, a very general one, like when you read a novel or a book for pleasure, for fun, or for escape. On the other hand, you could read for very specific reason, like trying to gain information from the text. Or you try to find main ideas. Or you try to read for inferences, interpretation, or evaluation. Now, the purpose of reading will usually determine the appropriate star type of reading and the relevant skills to be used. What we are saying in essence is that there are two types of reading. From what we've just stated above, that there are two types of reading. You can read for the general purpose and you can read for the specific purpose. The choice is yours. What are the objectives? What are the objectives of reading skills? Now, the objective of this skill is to inform and direct students on how to improve their reading speed at the same time making meaning from the reading text. So, at the end of this discussion or this course, we expect that you should be able to, one, read faster than when we started. Your speed of reading should be fast or faster than when we started. Secondly, we expect you to test your speed of reading and establish the number of words you can read per minute. Number three, we expect that you compare your reading speed and comprehension rate. And number four, we expect that you practice the different approaches to improve your reading speed on your own such as skimming, scanning, use of cardboard mask, phrase reading techniques and so on and so forth. And finally, we expect that uh, you should have the capacity to eliminate any further reading habits that you know. These are some of the objectives. These are not all, but these are the main objectives of reading skills. Now that takes us to the second unit of this course, which is the reading process. Now the entirety of the reading process can be divided into three major steps, namely, number one, pre-reading, number two, intensive, and number three, interpretive. Now the first one, pre-reading. In this stage, the reader engages in some preliminary activities that require skills in establishing a reading purpose and in selecting relevant materials and choosing suitable reading strategies. In this stage, the reader needs to preview the texts selected in order to determine whether they will meet his purpose or not. The second step is the intensive. In this stage, we expect the reader to try to understand the content of the text by reading it closely. This is where we expect that the reader pays attention to the writer's meaning, the main ideas and supportive details. The third step this stage goes beyond mere understanding. I repeat, this stage goes beyond mere understanding. Goes beyond mere understanding. As a leader, 
you try to interpret the meaning of the text. And this involves close analysis to discover relationships of the different parts. The expectation here is that, as a reader, you don't accept verbatim what you have read. You should have the capacity to give other interpretations to what you read. And finally, the reader uses the information to make inferences and draws his or own conclusions from what he has read. Types of reading. There is a great amount of reading you are expected or you are required to do in order to carry out your studies effectively at a tertiary level such as ours. You therefore need to acquire some essential fast reading techniques such as speed reading, scanning, and skimming. These are some of the fast reading techniques. In the first one, speed reading. What is speed reading? Speed reading involves the ability to read a certain amount of material within a short time and yet understand what you have read. For you to acquire the skill of speed reading, you need to know how long you have taken to read a given text as well as the number of words the text contains. So there are two major things here. First, you need to know how long, that's the time you have taken to read the text. At the same time, know the number of words the text contains on the book. You must know what time you used to read the text and the time it took you to read the text. When you have discover those two you can do a calculation of your reading speed or speed reading in words per minute in other words we have a formula used to calculate reading speed or speed reading and the formula is for you to know the speed reading you must know the number of words in the text all over Number of seconds taken to read the text, then times number of seconds in a minute all over one. The formula is very clear, but it's, it's important we face it. Number of words in the text and number of seconds taken to read the text, that's over number of text to read the text, times number of seconds in a minute. So speed reading has a formula and we are guided by this formula. Now if you look at that formula, there are two halves. The first half is what we have as number of words in the text all over number of seconds taken to read the text. Then times number of seconds in a minute all over one. From that formula, the second half of the formula is constant. Why is it constant? Number of seconds in a minute. How many seconds make one minute? 60 seconds make one minute. Six, that equals to 60 all over one. So number of seconds in a minute, that's equals to 60 all over one. That is constant. Where you'll be having your substitutions is the number of words the text has at the time taken to read the text. So the second, the, the, the first half of the formula will always be changed while the second have for is closer. Now we have an exercise for us to practice with, and the question is this: Assume, or let's assume that you are given a text of three thousand words, and you took ten minutes to read it. What would be your reading speed? Now, reading speed from that formula. Is that number of words in the text all over number of seconds to read the text? That's 
the number of words in the text is 3000 3000 words is what we have as a number of words all over number of seconds taken to read the text from the question you have 10 minutes that was used to read the text so to get the calculation of the time in seconds you multiply the, the 10 minutes by 60 and that will give us the 600 you are seeing on the, on the screen then time 60 all over 1 which is constant that one is constant 60 all over 1 so what you substituted are the values for the number of words uh -huh. what you have here which is 10 times 60 seconds 60 seconds make one minute we have 10 minutes so that's 60 times 10 which is 600 if you do your cross question very well you arrive at uh, you arrive at 300 words per minute now from above the reading speed of the above text or example is 300 words per minute WPM now please take note whenever you write your answers you must ensure that your answers are written the number your answers are in WPM very instructive now still talking about reading it's important to stress that speed is very very important very important very important now a fast reader is likely to understand better than a slow reader so as students who must strive to increase our speed of reading so our answer from above is 300 words per minute Now we have an exercise here and I enjoy all my students to look at this exercise carefully. The instruction is very clear. It says you should read the passage below as fast as you can. Read at once each structure as broken down into component parts. Then take note, you are to note the time you started reading and where you ended. So time yourself right now as you read this, as you listen to this lecture note the time you started reading and the time you stopped reading now like i said earlier on we're expected to read this passage and after you have read the passage you count the number of weights count the number of weights and after you have counted the number of weights even before you count ensure that you time yourself as you try to read this passage time yourself time yourself now when you have read the passage and you know the time you took or it took you to read the passage do these recordings of the time and the number of words. When you are done, you go back to your formula again. Go back to your formula again and substitute the values. So I leave you to do that exercise on your own so that you calculate your speed reading after you have read the text, after you have timed yourself 
and then uh, you can tell us the answer. In addition, there's another exercise for you to do here since what we are looking at is comprehension, total understanding of the passage read. I expect that uh, you try to turn to the passage after you have read it and totally understand or understood what the passage is all about and then answer these questions, questions 1 to 10. Just fill in the gaps, fill in the gaps and uh, to help you too. Now, we don't, or well, we would not like to conclude our discussion of spirit reading or reading spirit without telling us that uh, there are other two major things about this going through. Two major things are important in spirit reading. The first one is eye movement and the second one is flexibility. Now in eye movement is one of the useful techniques that facilitates speed reading. Research has shown that a fast reader's eyes takes in several words at a glance. So many words are taken by the eyes, so many chunks of words are taken in. And because of that, Like I said, eye movement and flexibility are the two most important things needed for speed reading. Your eye is very, very important and you need to use it wisely while reading because one of the things we are saying is that when you point at words, you slow down the movement of the eyes and that will also slow down your speed of reading. And since one of the objectives of speed reading is to read faster, we expect that our students we cultivate the habit of reading faster uh, subsequently. But for now, please let's avoid a situation whereby our eyes are not being used the way they should. Then another point is flexibility. As a reader, you are expected to be flexible. Now, to be flexible, you need to vary your speed to suit the material being read. If your purpose is to study and understand the text thoroughly in order to interpret, make critical analysis and evaluation of its content, you certainly have to read it fairly slowly. So speed reading is one of the things that is often critical. Well, another thing again is that as readers, we don't need to be too rigid. What is the purpose for your reading? Your purpose will determine your style, and that style is illustrated by being flexible. So you need to be flexible in any reading aspect you are doing. You need to be flexible, don't be rigid. Let it be flexible. Now, uh, the, the top thing here which is at uh, two point three is understanding writers' meanings. When writers write, the meanings of what they write needs to be understood. And meanings that we are looking at here has to do with meanings at the level of the words. In other words, we are looking at denotation and connotation as terms. The term denotation is the literal meaning of the word. It is used to refer to the core or essential scanning of a word where we use the dictionaries as our guide. That is denotation. Anytime we look at the meaning of a word in dictionary, you are looking at the denotative value for that word. But it is not every time that words are used denotatively. There are times that as authors, as authors, we go beyond 
the dictionary meanings of words to make our points and that is where we have terms like connotation coming to what we're saying now what is connotation connotation means meanings beyond the dictionary meanings Sometimes when we go beyond what the dictionary is saying to express ourselves, sometimes we use connotative or we use connotation to express our feelings, our attitudes. So these two levels are used to arrange.
Um, many times when strange read passages, we discover that they are faced with difficult words. And what most students do is to look for the meaning of the word in a dictionary that they do not understand or don't know their meanings. Yes, the dictionary sometimes and most times provide information, useful words for that matter. But when it comes to meanings, the dictionary does not provide all that the reader wants to understand meanings. There are other ways which a, a reader must be familiar with. Competent readers who have discovered do not refer to the dictionary each time they come across a difficult or strange word. What they do is to infer, draw an inference, or they work it out, or they work out the meaning of the expression from the context. So you should also learn to infer meanings of words and expressions from the text. Then the next thing is extensive reading. Extensive reading. Now extensive reading is a type of reading that we do often during leisure to familiarize ourselves with a wide variety of reading materials such as newspapers, magazines, fiction, short stories, biographies, autobiographies, and many others. There are several benefits from reading widely or extensively. And some of the benefits include, one, when you read widely, you have pleasure and relaxation. Number two, we have acquisition of general knowledge. Number three, we have increase in reading speed. And number four, we have imaginative skills. Number five, vocabulary development. These are some of the benefits of reading extensively. Now, how do we develop extensive reading ability? There are guidelines to follow. And these guidelines are suggested in form of five major steps. The first step is review. The second is select. The third is read fast. The fourth is record. And the fifth is report. Number one, preview. In this step, you should expose yourself to as many books on various subjects as available in the school and public libraries, as well as bookshops. Number two, which is select. After you have previewed the books to read, then select the most suitable one, which should be captivating, interesting, and well laid out, which should be written in standard English. It should not be too long or tiny in prints at the initial stage of your extensive reading development. It should also not be difficult or too easy for your level. So select a book that is captivating, interesting, and well laid out. A book which is written in standard English. The third step is read fast. Now this is the third stage in extensive reading. In order to be able to read one book per week, which has always been our ideal prescription for you, read at least one book. Discipline yourself. When you pick a book, read very fast. Your reading speed should certainly be more than the one you used for reading a textbook. 
the fourth one the fourth step is record now this is the fourth stage in extensive reading development exercise we expect that you open a reading diary today for example if you have not opened one and whenever you read you do some recordings read do some recordings or recordings on the novel or book that you have read you should take note of when you started reading the novel and when you ended take note of the title of the book the words and expressions you have gained and the summary of the novel in probably 10 sentences only now we have a typical example of what we're saying in terms of recording and that's the next thing i want to show you when you start reading looking at this guide that you have before you now the name of the reader that's your name as a reader the date you started reading the title of the book what is the title what is the name of the author make sure you you, you take note of it when was the book published who is the publisher then take note of the date you started reading the date that you ended the reading place where reading was done what are the new words and expressions you came across as a result of reading what are the new sentence patterns you saw and what is the summary of the novel or the book and what is your own overall impression of the book or the novel now this is a guideline so that whenever you read you have something to document whenever you read you have something to put down from the book you have read in case you don't come across the book later in life now the last step under extensive reading is report now we expect that you report what you have read to other classmates of yours or colleagues report to your friends to your 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 colleagues in the class learn to discuss what you have read from the book what you've understood the book is all about that's what we mean by reporting don't just keep what you have read to yourself by talking by reporting by discussing with others you have more light that takes us to the next topic which is reading academic textbooks and notebooks we are here as students our engagements are usually academic in nature and how do we get to this level we need to read our academic textbooks and notebooks now we want to look at the way we can read an academic textbook textbooks and our notes that calls for a careful reading now what is academic textbook kind of reading it is that which is done in order to acquire something new now in academic test book and notebook reading books are chewed and digested sorry in skimming scanning and speed reading books are merely tested but in academic textbooks and notebook reading books are chewed there's a difference between skimming scanning and doing speed reading you are just testing merely testing books but when you get yourself involved in academic textbook and notebook reading that is where you chew books and digest them so reading of academic textbooks and notes 
demand three things. The first is concentration. The second is diligence. And the third is carefulness. Now, what is the techniques? Or what are the techniques of text that's textbook and notebook reading? The technique for reading your textbook and notebook is represented by a formula and the formula is SQ4R that formula has six steps and it is suggested that the first S stands for survey the second letter which is Q stands for question 4R ordinarily in science should have been R raised to power 4 but here we are looking at R broken down into 4 parts so we have R1 which means read R2 which means recall R3 which means review and R4 which means react R1, you are expected to read, to read what you have before you. R2, you are expected to do some recallings of what you have read before. R3, do a review of what you are reading. And R4 means react. Our reactions can come in different forms. Uh, sometimes our reactions can come in form of demonstration practical and so on and so forth depending on the course involved now let us take these steps one by one the first one like we said is survey S stands for survey now before you read any text there is a need for you to first of all survey at a glance the material by looking at the various headings and subheadings just flip through to see what the book has or what the book contains usually if it's an academic textbook you are expected to read the preface the introduction and the end of the book to be sure it is a suitable textbook for you if it is a notebook you can see that the notes ensure the notes you are, are complete don't read incomplete notes and funny enough, most of you don't copy notes in your classrooms. You just sit down and watch the lecturer. That is wrong. The next thing is question. Q stands for question. SQ for R. Q stands for question. Now, as you survey the text, we expect that you formulate some questions that will guide your reading. How do you do this? Turn the first heading to a question. Asking yourself a question before reading will arouse your interest and increase your comprehension rate. Now, R1, that's from R4. R1, like I said earlier, means read. 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 This means careful reading of the text for main ideas and supporting duties. You may reduce whatever you are afraid or the ideas into a jutter or in, 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 inside the jutter. R2 means recall. It has to do with you carefully recalling what you have read. And doing this is to jot down on a piece of paper what you are able to recall. R3 review. After you have read the text and recalled what you have read, 
you will still need to look over your notes whatever you have jotted down intermittently look over them so that you can do a review of what you have jotted down and this can be done morning afternoon and evening and the last thing here is the art as you read your text and notebooks don't just stop at reading an accumulation of facts you as a reader as a scholar should move a step further by reacting to what you have read if you read a play try to add some interesting parts if you read about how to perform an experiment try to actually do the experiment and so on and so forth now the last topic we are dealing with today is some faulty reading habits while you read there are some habits that we see as faults some habits that we see as wrong there is therefore at this level a need for us to address this faults or these faulty reading habits because they do not only slow down reading activities but they also affect our reading adversely what are some of these faults number one head movement head movement now head movement is the act of moving one's head from one to the other while reading you just move your head while you're reading yes sometimes it is an unconscious act especially when the reader is nervous about his reading or trying a student a reading behavior while reading so try to be composed that's why we say that before you read make sure that the environment is conducive psychologically mentally you are okay you are not thinking of other things before you read you are not hungry the second faulty habit while you read is pointing at words some people use their fingertips their rulers their pencil their barrels or sticks as they read now when you point at weights when you're reading you slow down the movement of your eyes we had said that one of the objectives of reading or this skill is to read fast you cannot read fast when you are pointing at words and that's why pointing at words is a very bad habit and to avoid this if you have been guilty of this as a reader please stop it number three is vocalization vocalization involves pronouncing aloud each word as it is read or the act of whispering the weddings of the text vocalization may be in the form of lip movement tongue or throat movement or the movement of the vocal cords at this level of our education attainment we are not expected to vocalize what we read we are not expected to read aloud what we are reading so if you are guilty of this act please stop it if you really want to maintain a high reading speed try by all means to keep your lips closed while you read 
The other one, which is number four, is sub vocalization. Is an aspect of vocalization. The difference between this type of vocalization and the previous one, vocalization, is that in vocalization, people see the movement of your organs of speech. But in sub vocalization, nobody is seeing the movement of your vocal apparatus, such as the leaves, the tongue, the vocal cords. Rather, there is an inner speech within the reader's mind. The reader is reading aloud to himself. Yes, nobody is seeing what you are reading. You are saying each word to yourself. You are clearly pronouncing each word and listening to yourself. And just like we said for vocalization, it occurs as a result of concentrating on individual words, which slows down the reading speed. If you are guilty of this offense as a reader, our advice is for you to stop this habit by concentrating on comprehension and speed. Now, sub-vocalization is a bit controversial. Many textbooks do not write about it. But it exists. And we say it in our students, you are not reading aloud. People do not see the movement of your organs of speech, but you know you are reading aloud. Our advice is to stop. Our advice is that you should stop this habit if you are guilty of it. If you are not guilty of it, guilty of it there is no need to panic. There is no need to panic. And finally, regression. As a fifth faulty reading habit regression what is regression regression is the practice of glancing back and rereading the words and phrases that you have already read regression is a sign of poor reading which may be due to poor vocabulary or lack of concentration or lack of confidence regression slows down reading speed considerably you are expected to therefore force yourself to move forward constantly as you read. Now, from what you have said, you deduce that when you read, maybe four or five pages, and then you go back again to go and start reading, or to read what you have already read, that is regression. That is regression. It slows down speed of reading considerably. So we expect that you force yourself to move forward constantly as you read. However, regression may sometimes become necessary when the reader needs to reread to check the points vital for a better understanding. But outside that, regression is a very bad habit. And we expect that our students will try to concentrate position themselves well before they read so that they don't need to regress. I want to say, finally, that we on the GST 111 platform are happy that we've been able to cover up our topics for you in this course. I was supposed to talk about the lecturers who are teaching this course from the beginning but from what each and every one of us has delivered I guess the contents of our topics have been well covered and well delivered we wish all our students well and we expect that uh, through this course most of you who have listened to us will have learned some salient truths about communication in English. We, we pray that uh, you will devote your time to read 247 while on campus. We also expect that you will listen to your lectures. We also expect that your writing skills will have been sharpened. We also expect that uh, your touch pattern 
has been improved upon and you will throw some things that will make you to excel while you're here on campus as an undergraduate student. Take advantage of what you have heard from us and do what we have told you to do. If you do, success is yours and you, you will not fail. Once again, you are all welcome on board as students of National State University, KFI. We expect that you will not be involved in anything that will put you in trouble or any, any form of examination misconduct. Thank you. Thank you very much. Till we see you again.